Hello, everybody. It's Joe Pometto. Joe, the lawyer, your favorite live attorney, uh, coming to you on the Common Sense Academy. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining me. Oh, 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 shoot. I had the volume down. Hello, everyone. Joe Pometto, Joe, the lawyer, coming to you with the Common Sense Academy. Excuse my bacon collar. Um, I know I had it. I know I had it. This is an old shirt. Um, excuse my bacon collar. Hey, Warren. Hey, Veronica. Welcome to the Common Sense Academy. We discuss sovereign citizens, First Amendment auditors, people behaving badly. I take questions about the law, about the fake law that the sovereign citizens abide by, and about the incorrect law that First Amendment auditors uh, claim to follow. It's not real. It's not right. It's not correct, ladies and gentlemen. It is not correct. Hey, Bob. Hey, Chief. Um, let me open by talking about what's on my mind today. So I've been watching this Netflix special, um, and it's called Trial by Media. And I have to tell you, I am blown away. Joe Donho, you want to discuss admiralty law? Absolutely. Absolutely. Give me an – I mean <laughs> – Here's what I'll tell you that I learned about the admiralty law. Then I'm going to go into trial by media. Um, admiralty law is the law of the sea. Uh, maritime law and admiralty law under United States law are about the same. My understanding is that sovereign countries cover about 20, uh, 20 miles out from, from 20 miles out from the coast is covered by whichever sovereign country uh, owns that coast. And then out in the middle of the open seas, it's an open question. It's an open question uh, um, as to as to uh, where the problem is. Um, here's the funniest thing. Can I run my murder casino boat? Absolutely, Warren. Absolutely. Just don't get caught. Just don't get caught. Hey, CW. Uh, isn't that rhetorical fact that they are sovereign make them dumb? Absolutely, absolutely. Hello, Veronica. Hello, Mass One. Hello, CW. Um, the great I don't know if I talked about this on live yet, but doing a little more research, and there's a few sovereign citizens out there that really get into the admiralty law, as Joe Donho uh you know requested there. And uh part of the concept, and I I just love this, I love this. Part of their argument is that a courtroom looks like a, a, a ship. A courtroom looks like a ship. And if you go into most courtrooms, old courtrooms and modern courtrooms, they're all made with like really nice uh, dark wood. Okay. I don't know what kind of wood that is. Maybe some of you do. Hey, Beverly, thanks for jumping in. I appreciate you watching me with Chuck. That was a great interview. So most courtrooms are made with this really dark, uh, nice wood. Okay, maybe someone in the chat knows what what, what kind of wood that is. Um, and and so the courtroom is made of wood, and then and then the the uh, the gallery of the courtroom is like the belly of the boat. Okay, so it's made, courtrooms made of wood. The gallery is the belly of the boat. And then up top high, okay, is where the captain would be on the bridge of the boat. That's where the judge is. Okay, so the judge is actually the captain of a boat full of admiralty law. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is where it comes from with the sovereign citizens. This is part of where it comes from. Okay. A courtroom looks like a boat. There's a, there's a deck in the middle. Okay. And, uh, Hey bullet. Thank you very much. I'm going to get some bullet coffee on me. When I visit Chuck, we're going to have a, a coffee together. Um, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Um, and so that's, so the the a courtroom is a boat. The judge is the captain, and they're in there uh, practicing admiralty law. I mean, that is what is going on. That's a wild one. Mahogany. Thank you, John. Thank you, sir. Uh, my nice mahogany coffee table. Just kidding. 
You guys can all see I have this. I bought this bookshelf at Walmart and, and it's Boeing, as a lot of people in the comments like to tell me. So that's the that's the root. That's part of the argument of admiralty law. Um, there's more to it than that. And a couple of these sovereigns out there really get into the admiralty law prospect. And, you know, their argument is, uh, you know, there's a couple of different theories how they say the United States is a corporation. Actual federal and state law doesn't act, doesn't really apply. The law that this illegitimate federal government is imposing on everybody is admiralty law slash commercial law slash international law. That's the fake law that these crooked judges and in, in, in politicians have foisted upon the American people and, and the sovereign citizens, you know, they believe that they free themselves of this when they declare their sovereignty, which can be done in a, in a whole bunch of different ways. Um, so it's just, it's really fascinating and it's really hilarious. You and Chuck are a better team than Martin and Lewis. I wouldn't go that far, Tom, but I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you. Um, they do love Black's Law. They do. It could be Walnut. Every courtroom's different. A lot of it's like this fake wood, I think, too. And not every courtroom is like that. You get into more modern ones, and um, you know, it's not a wood decor at all. It might be stone. It might just be drywall. It really depends where you go. The Act of 1871. Yeah, I've gotten into that a little bit. They all have different Bibles. Doesn't it? the fact is not at sea, therefore admiralty law doesn't work. Exactly. Admiralty law only applies at sea. Only applies at sea. Absolutely, Jeff. Hey, Chuck, thank you for joining me. I really enjoyed our live show. Um, I'm going to post a copy of the live show to my channel. I just haven't had the time to do it yet. Um, but yeah, that was probably the most maybe the most fun that I had doing a live show yet was with Chuck. Um, you know, and I've, I've done a couple of, uh, of, um, crossovers. So really enjoyed it. Really was a lot of fun. Balsa wood. Yeah, that's what this is. That's what this is, Bob, that it's balsa wood. Yeah, they have, they, uh, they create, they have in their mind, their own common law. They literally have just created their own laws. Like it's hilarious. They've created their own laws. Um, I do want to correct something from one of my videos earlier in the week uh, from Van Bayon. I'm sure you guys are all, if you're not uh, subscribed to Van Bayon, go to Van Bayon too. He puts up all the good sovereign stuff. I rip most of his videos. Um Anyway, the sovereign citizens that were squatting, the, the Moorish sovereign citizens, and the one guy with the Indian uh, headdress on that were squatting, I thought they were in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I have to say, the houses, you don't generally see houses like that, of that design in Pittsburgh, but I thought, oh, maybe it's a newer, a newer development. Hey, Mass, thank you very much. I appreciate the super chat. Um, you don't see houses like that in the newer developments uh, or in, the, in Pittsburgh generally, but you might in newer developments. Hey, James. And so when I was watching it, but they kept just saying Pittsburgh and the Pittsburgh police. And I got to say their uniforms and I couldn't see their badges. I mean, most cops uniforms are the same, look similar. And I figured, wow, this is in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, because I thought that those sovereigns were out of New York the guy with the headdress or New York or Philadelphia. It turns out that video was in Pittsburgh, California, which is like a suburb of San Francisco. So it makes it hilarious, but it would have been more fun if it was here in my city. I will gladly buy a $1 McDonald's coffee mask. You better believe it. Um, hey, Adam, how you doing? I didn't look you up on Twitter. I got to find you on Twitter, man. Thanks for stopping in. I thought it was Bethel Park, California. Huh? Yeah, I know, right? It could have been Bethel Park, maybe like a newer development. I didn't know it was it wasn't PA at first. Um, a lot of balls to squat in a million dollar house. I know. And these dudes were in that house. Uh, and I, I mean, uh, what goes through your minds? Um, but they're in that house. And uh, they had like their car parked in the garage and like all their shit was in there. Like all their stuff was in the house. 
Like, what are you trying to do? Like, what are you going to do? It's absolutely hilarious. Um, and they're like, oh, we need more time. The police were being so nice. I mean, I would boot, I, I, you know, they could be booted and then, and then, you know, they might have to take legal proceedings to get their stuff back. You could tell, though, the police just wanted them out so it was over with. So, you know, so they didn't have this didn't have to become a massive legal battle, which it could have been. Um, and uh, it was just hilarious. I mean, and the dude was had a machete on his back. I mean, what is go what's he trying to be like the uh, the um, I don't know, like a Native American Rambo or something. I mean, oh, crack me up. Hey, Adam, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ask, tell, make. Ask, tell, make. Um, I appreciate that. If you want to ask me a specific question with your super chat, I would be happy to address it. But I appreciate the super chat very, very much, Adam Mangold. You should watch the Dutch sovereign citizen who tried to arrest the judge in the Netherlands. If you have that video, drop it. I haven't seen that one. She threatened to have the cops deported, right? Right. Um, exactly. They may not have been noticed for months. Joe, I bought coffee, but right now I'm drinking beer. Same time sip comes 15 minutes in. We're four minutes away and then we'll get underway. Um, that neighborhood had never seen that. <laughs> Beverly, you are absolutely right. That neighborhood had never seen anything like that. Yeah, the police arrived about an hour after the video. I mean, hilarious. And they said that the family, at the people who owned, they were selling the house. I mean, that's just how ridiculous it is. Look, yeah, you could, I guess people put these houses for sale. It's not that hard to get in. They said they got in through HUD. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't buy that. Like you got in through HUD. Like, no, like you have to have a password to get those keys or they broke in. They just didn't want to tell the police they broke in. Red's Wicked Ale, 8%. That's a good drink, Mass. That's a good drink. They don't wait until you draw the machete. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They didn't waste time arresting that dude. There's like, I mean, what are you going to do? You know, you're already in a house. You're broken in. You've already committed trespassing, uh, likely bur some form of burglary. And you have a machete and an Indian headdress. I, I got to give that. I'm going to give that dude some credit here. A HUD McMansion. <laughs> Joe Donna, I would, I would have put that in the thumbnail. Hey, David, thank you very much. I absolutely will buy my buy myself a coffee. I appreciate it. And that's that's cute cats in there. Um, yeah, I should have put Hud McMansion in the thumbnail. That would have been hilarious. Um, but uh, I just I couldn't. I, that one just blew me away. And um, the yeah, the cops there, they dealt they were very professional. They dealt with it very well. Oh, but the du dude's outfit. So not only does he have the headdress going on, he had like some cool looking suit and then like like shirt and then a belt and a machete. Like I was kind of a cool outfit. <laughs> I mean, I got to give them that. It was like, if you're going to a Halloween party, just don't bring the fake machete. Um, but how many of you saw, so I put this on my Facebook page, Google my Facebook page. The link is all messed up. Um, the stormtrooper that got arrested in Canada. Who saw the stormtrooper get arrested in Canada? Hang on one second. Chief, I know you saw that. Um, there are so many videos on this now. Wow. Wow. Um, I don't, I'm just gonna pick one, okay? I had to do this. Whoops. Um, I'm just gonna pick one of these to share with you guys if you didn't see the stormtrooper, okay. Um, do you have any details on Sharon Tracy Gale's sentencing? No, but I can look it up. We can take a look at it, David. If that's her correct name, I know I've looked at it before. Sharon Tracy Gale. Is that the correct spelling of her name? If that's the correct spelling of her name, I can look her up. Um, Okay, so the Stormtrooper, a black Native American version of the biker from Raising Air. Yeah, that's exactly what, that's a good one, Veronica. Um, 
So the the stormtrooper Chuck, if you didn't see it, you got to watch it. This the bar. Okay, wait, wait, wait. The bar where this happened. The bar where this happened is called the bar. All right, I, I, hang on. I don't know if you guys. I'm I'm a I'm a pretty big Star Wars fan. Okay. The, the Coco Vanilla Galactic Cantina. Okay, so there's this bar in Canada, and I think it's somewhere outside Toronto. I had looked before. It's And this bar is called the Coco Galactic Vanilla Cantina, and they bring they, they feature Marvel characters and Star Wars characters. And so I guess the bartenders, the people there dress up, or people just dress up like those characters and then go to the bar. Okay, it's like a... It's like a nerd fest bar. I mean, that's what it is, right? It's a nerd fest bar. And um and uh so my eyes, I'm going to I'm going to get the corona. Um oh, let's do the same time sip. Then I'm going to talk about the the stormtrooper and then I'm going to look up Sharon Tracy Gale Bay's uh case. Okay, everybody, um raise your cup or glass in the air. It tastes better when we sip together. I'm drinking Diet Coke. There's some uh, Red's Ale out there. There's some beer out there. There's some coffee out there. I got a couple of uh, super chats um, from David and from Joe Donho uh, that I am very, very uh, thankful for. And Adam, thank you guys very much. This one is to you and to the Coco Vanilla Galactic Cantina. It tastes better when we sip together. Cheers. Probably shouldn't chug Diet Coke. I don't think that's good for anybody. Um, okay, so this stormtrooper is standing outside this bar in a parking lot, walking around doing like marching drills. But the problem is that she's got a blaster. I'm going to call it a blaster because it's a Star Wars. A blaster this big. So it's it's an absurd scene that the police roll up and it, it turns out to be this female and she's crying when they when they put her in cuffs but like what are the cops supposed to do like we live in the age of mass shootings okay they didn't arrest they didn't charge her they detained her so they could get the weapon away they didn't actually charge her with anything but what are the police supposed to do i mean we have mass shootings now we have mass shootings and especially in canada they just had one they just had one up there in Nova Scotia, I think. Um, yeah, I do have Twitter. I'm on Twitter as this. Joe knows laws. I'm still not good at linking everything and this and that. Um, swamp water. Woo! That'll do it for you. So exactly, Warren. Exactly. Because of the mass shooting, they were on their toes, and they see a stormtrooper. I mean, you could see some sicko putting on a stormtrooper thing and going and killing people like it'd be crazy and sick. Uh, and I, I detest it and condemn it, but you could see something crazy like that. So I don't blame the police for taking the action that they did. Um, but it turned into a weird situation when five minutes in, you have a woman dressed in a really good stormtrooper costume. Let's just put that out there too. This costume was top of the line in a stormtrooper costume. It's just, like blonde girl with a ponytail crying while the police are putting her on her gra on the ground and picking up a plastic blaster. It was just a, a funny scene, but I, you can't blame the police for doing what they had to do. I mean, they got a call. Somebody called them. Um, I that the Nova Scotia shooting is crazy. I didn't at first. I didn't look into it, and then when I started reading and saw he dressed up as a Royal Mountie. I mean. Royal Canadian Mounted Police. That was cr that's crazy. I want to read more into that to get this guy's profile. Um, but he was uh, he was like obsessed with the police and like the Royal Mounties. He had like all this stuff in his house hung up, like dedicated to them, like absolutely w wild and sad and tragic and just terrible. So you can't blame the police for doing that. You really, really can't. Um, 
Okay, I got a question. What's going on? We looked up Sharon Tracy Gale Bay's case before. I'm going to look it up again. Okay, let's see if I can find it. Now, I don't know if uh, if I have her correct name. That's always an issue. Let's see. Sharon Tracy Gale. Let's see. I know how to look things up in Pennsylvania. Um, there it is. Okay, as long as I have the right name. But uh, an update was requested. Okay, so um, she's currently incarcerated at the uh, Delaware County Prison. Um, her trial was April 20th. Um, proceed to court. Defiant trespass. Defiant trespass. Proceed to court. Proceed to court. Lawful order. Jury trial is continued. Commonwealth's motion to consolidate case correspondence, Roman canon law. <laughs> uh, I don't believe there's been a trial yet. Uh, Dave, were you under the impression that Sharon, Sharon had a trial? So there's no trial. A trial has not occurred yet on the, the trespassing case. Maybe the other case. Let's see. Um, the other case also was scheduled for trial on the same day. She's in Delaware County, Delco. That's called Delco out there. Um, F3, risking catastrophe. Very rare charge. Um, brum, boom, 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 boom. All her cases held for court. She has standby court-appointed counsel. I'm sure she's representing herself, and she has that other nutty guy who was, I think there was a guy who was filing stuff for her. William Davis Jr., standby, court appointed. Um, counsel, let me see if Davis is on both cases. Uh, Mark Chappelle on the trespass. She's got private counsel on the trespass. Uh, but da, 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 order pretrial statements. <laughs> Jury trial is continued. Case correspondence. She hasn't been convicted yet. Um, she hasn't been convicted yet. Were you under the impression that she was convicted? They use Bay. It's an old title of Turkish nobility. Yes, they do. So far, I doubt that. Um, so my understanding is both of her cases, I'm looking at the docket right here. Um, both of her cases are pending. Um, both cases pending. Still, on both cases, she filed some crazy motions. Let's see here. Um, she filed a motion for the a case correspondence, rights that cannot be taken away, general civil orders, and two filings based on Roman canon law, and then a miscellaneous untitled case correspondence. Let's see what else here. General civil orders. Um, uh, allodial sovereign bond. She filed for an allodial sovereign bond. An affidavit for demand to dismiss the case. A lawful proclamation and notification of representation of Moorish National. <laughs> um but she's got attorneys on both cases. Both of them have been put off, and they're probably not. Pitts was convicted. Last I heard, he had not been sentenced. Yeah, Sharon's cases have not gone to trial. They are still pending, likely postponed because of the coronavirus. Um, it was scheduled for May, April 20th. The Pennsylvania Supreme Court issued an order canceling all jury trials and all no, basically non-essential hearings until June 1st at the earliest, until June 1st at the earliest. So you're not going to see any trial for her. I don't even see a new date. They haven't even set the new date. So she'll probably be in June, July, or August. We will see. We'll do another baby, baby, little baby, same time sip. It tastes better when we sip together. I already did the official one. The official one's always 15 minutes in. Yeah, she has standby counsel court appointed on the defiant trespass. Mark Chappelle 
is actually, she actually has a private defense attorney on that. Um, so we will see what happens. Prost, prost. So we will see what happens here. Um, when, you know, that case goes forward, I'll keep you guys updated. I'll follow, I'll, I'll try to follow it as well. Um, I've been watching Trial by Media on Netflix. Have any of you guys been watching Trial by Media? Um, it's pretty wild. And it was like, it's kind of funny because I remember, I mean, um, you know, I'm 37 years old. I'll be 38. So I was like from basically 10 to 18 years old in the 1990s. Um, and, uh, I, I am sorry, eight to 18 years old in the 1990s. And so I remember some of these trials, but I didn't, I wasn't aware enough to really get a perspective on them. And the first trial that they cover in this show, so this trial by media is like eight episodes, really good. You guys like the lawyer stuff. You're here. I imagine you do um, really good. The first trial they cover is this, this Jenny Jones trial. Okay, where Jenny Jones had this gay guy come on the show, and then um, he had his his straight friend come on the show too, and he revealed on the show to the straight guy that he had a crush on him, and that he wanted to like lube him up and all this stuff on the hammock, and um, he got really, and the guy was just like super super embarrassed. So after the show. This dude like starts messing with him, like passing him these letters saying he wants to, you know, have sex with him. And a guy goes and gets a gun and comes to his house and boom, blows him away. Um, so he has a criminal trial. And the interesting thing was he wasn't found guilty of first degree murder. And that's premeditated. And this guy like drove, he didn't even own a gun drove to maybe he owned a gun. I don't know, but he drove, bought a new gun, bought ammunition. Okay. Excuse me. I always burp because I'm drinking a soda, bought a gun, bought ammunition, loaded the gun, drove to this guy's house, boom, and shot him. If that's not a premeditated murder, I don't know what is. One of the things they argued, which I thought was interesting, is when he walked into the house and pointed the gun at him, the other dude like picked up a chair, like maybe he was going to throw it. I mean, all right, self-defense, that's an argument. I think you're a little past that. Like if somebody walks in and points a gun at you and then you throw a chair at them and that person shoots you, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, they found him guilty of second degree murder and he got 25 years instead of life. Apparently he's out of jail now or no. I, I think I saw that he's out of jail now. Um, he was a young guy at the time. Clearly a guy, a crime of passion, passion for guns. He did not think about it first. LOL. Exactly. Not a brat. Exactly. So um, then, then the family of the deceased sued the Jenny Jones show and ABC. And uh, they put Jenny Jones on the stand and this big time Michigan lawyer who I looked up, he's still practicing, looks like a character. He's got this wild hair, um, cross examines Jenny Jones for like two days. Okay. And he tears her up. Like she did pretty good. Like you got to figure somebody like that who has their own TV show, they're in the public eye, they're giving interviews, they're going to be tough to cross-examine. I mean, they're going to be good. They're going to be a good witness. Like people who are uh, confident and they're good public speakers generally come off. I got like crusties in my eyes. I must have the corona. Um, anyway, come off as very good speakers. And Jenny Jones came off and she was smiling the whole time. And he turned that smile on her. He was like, he was like, you're smiling. He goes, you know, somebody's dead because of you. And he just started, I don't know if he said that exactly, but he just, he pounded her. This attorney got a $46 million verdict from the trial. $46 million verdict against ABC. And if you watch this throughout, like juries love sticking it to big companies when they get the opportunity. Anyway, $46 million verdict. And then the Supreme Court or maybe it was the appellate court right below, which is generally called the superior court. So you have a superior court, then the Supreme Court. They overturned 
the the uh, the jury's decision, and they ended up getting nothing. But that episode is just tremendous. Like, put that show on trial by media. Watch one show. Yeah, it was there was good lawyering all around. First, he had good defense attorneys. Okay, and, and here's the thing with a verdict like that is. Uh, for the criminal trial, all right, the dude's facing life. You as a defense attorney, if you got him 25 years when he's facing life, you know, you're going to you're, you're gonna pat yourself on the back for that. I mean, look, nobody's going to take a 25 years. I mean, that guy's going to feel like crap. I mean, nobody's going to take a 25 year sentence lying, you know, easily, but he took a man's life. Okay, whatever. Um, but the defense attorneys could walk away from that criminal trial, patting themselves on the back, thinking, "Oh, I did a great job. I'm good. Oh, yeah, I did a good job." Um, you know, they beat the they beat a life sentence or the death penalty for first degree murder. I don't know. Michigan has it, but most states have it in some form. Uh, beat the death penalty, got 25 years. He's going to get out soon. You know, was, he was. I mean, he lost a third of his life, a quarter of his life. But the prosecution can claim victory as well because the prosecutors can walk away from it and say, look, you know, we put them away for 25 years. I mean, that's some sense of justice. I'm sure the family doesn't. Um, but, you know, the family feels a certain way. But that's some sense of justice. Both parties sort of walk away from that. And um, that happens a decent amount in the law. And especially as a criminal defense attorney, sometimes I'm just trying to get a lesser included charge. Okay. And that can be a huge victory for a defense attorney. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, so I, I highly suggest watching that show. You guys are here. You're interested. You like, you like lawyer, law, police type stuff. This is, this is really good. Um, I mean, how it wasn't premeditated. I just, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. Um, what'd they say here? Jerry Falwell and Pat Robertson defended the killing in the media. Yeah. I mean, people, you know, the, the interesting thing about certain things, um, is yeah, they shouldn't. There's no way to. There's no way to defend that killing. Okay, there's no way to really defend that killing. Um, I, again, the 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 shelf thing. You know what the defense attorneys did though is they blamed it. They had a psychiatrist come in and they blamed it on the television show. That's the criminal trial. They blamed it on the television show, and there's something compelling about that because imagine. If you walked in to that show and then you were embarrassed in front of, you know, how many people see something like that? And then the trial afterwards, you can guarantee everybody, every adult in America has seen it. I mean, million, five, 10 million people see you publicly embarrassed. That I can't understand people to go on those shows. Okay. Go on the wow. To go on those shows is wild. So um, I highly suggest watching those. Another good one, because I'm on my soapbox now, and then I'll take questions um, or you guys can tell me to stop. Another good one is the Amanda Knox special on Netflix. And this was, you know, this is more that show, Trial by Media, it's all 80s and 90s stuff. Again, I was all, so I remembered, I remember the OJ Simpson trial. It doesn't even cover the OJ trial. Maybe it does. These are like sort of like a grade below, like the really, really big ones. Well, nah, not really. These were all really, really big, but I was just too young to care. I would just walk by and the news would be on and my dad would be watching it and I'd catch a glimpse or I'd watch it for 10 minutes, right? Some things you can't miss even when you're in high school. Um, but it, the, these most of these cases are from the 80s and 90s, and they were all covered in the media. Just really good show. But watch the Amanda Knox special on Netflix. And the I'll give you a, a, the crazy thing about, like, Amanda Knox ends up, like, not taking a plea, and she fights the case, and she's convicted in an Italian court. And their court systems are entirely different, okay? All the European court systems, except for England— are in, are entirely different. And so um she ends up convicted. 
Well, later on, I, I mean, I'm going to give you, uh, I, I'm giving away, listen, I'm, I'm giving away the cart here. So spoiler alert, spoiler alert. I only gave away the cart on one of those by if anybody, spoiler alert on Amanda Knox. This doesn't take away from the series. You should still watch it. But anyway, she fights the case. She's convicted and she does like 10 years in jail. They find another suspect who takes a plea and does five years and gets out. So, you know, again, I'm a, I, I do a lot of defense work. Um, so to me, sometimes I get a great plea for my clients and they're, oh man, I still got to do three, four years. And I got to look at them and I'll be like, man, we go to trial and you lose, you could do 10 years. So you take a third of that sentence guaranteed, or you take a chance to beat it. But if you lose, you do 10 years. Like, I don't think there's much, of, especially, it depends on the facts. The facts always drive a case. Like what what evidence is there? What are the facts that drive the case? Um, but just so fascinating. Yeah, I know. Phil Donahue, Geraldo, Jenny Jones, Oprah Winfrey. The funny thing about Jenny Jones, if you watch this, they'll say like she started out trying to be like a serious talk show like Oprah and she wasn't getting the ratings. And then she started having all these goofy characters on. So she got the ratings and then she just went full, full Jerry Springer. Joe, you talked my three-year-old to sleep. Well, I'm a pretty good talker, okay? Uh, listen, <laughs> I went to law school for three years, and and uh, and I've been an attorney for six years. All I do is talk. You guys should hear me on the phone. In Italian court, you have to bring at least five homemade meatballs. <laughs> That's why I would go to the Italian court, Liz. Well, in the, these European courts, okay, the judge is like, the judge does the questioning. It's so bizarre to me. The attorneys play smaller roles and you don't have courtroom drama like you have in American courts. I mean, Pete, there's a lot of issues with the American court system. I'm not going to deny that, but I stand firmly by the United States courts. I think it's the best court system in the world. And honestly, like I wouldn't want to get caught, like I wouldn't want to get into legal trouble in one of these, like even one of those European countries, but any country that doesn't have a legal system like ours. So, you know, the United States and Canada based on like English common law, like you can hire a lawyer and the lawyer can advocate for you. It's like if you get in trouble in Italy, like a judge is just going to decide the case. Like that's it. Like you don't have a fighting chance. I, I don't know. That's just me. I think in the U.S. you have a fighting. You have really you have a fighting chance. You know, and you have lawyer, and you get to tell your story. You know, you get to tell your story how you want to tell it, and you have a jury who decides. I don't know. I think our our legal system is the best, but I don't. I don't know. I don't know enough about the European systems to really talk smack on it. Amanda Knox trial in Italy was unfair. Police looked at no one else. Miriam wanted to pin. Oh, absolutely, Mary. Absolutely. And they got a guy a little while later. Um, and the sad thing is, is she ended up beating the case, but she did like 10 years in jail. And I, my point, the only point I wanted to make was, so, okay, she's vi she feels vindicated now, right? And she beat the case, but she'll never get those 10 years back. OK, or eight years or whatever it was, she probably could have taken a plea at the beginning of the case and done like three or four years and been gone. Just like the suspect they caught who might have probably been the guy who did it. He did five years and he's gone. OK, um, but that that one's wild, too. I mean, the Amanda Knox is wild as well. Uh for PS 1970 PSA, Scott, the guy getting busted. When you get busted for drugs over there, you're in for the hassle of your life, Scott. I bet, man. I bet. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Best money justice can buy. COJ. Yeah, money plays a big role. It does. That's how big companies make it almost impossible for a little guy to win against them. Yeah, that's not, that's true. But again, that's not always true. Like this. Uh, this uh, this plaintiff's attorney in in Detroit hung a forty six million dollar verdict on ABC. Now it got overturned in the law, but you can beat you can you can slam the big companies. With, I mean, having a good lawyer matters. Like having a good lawyer, a lawyer who's really going to go in there 
and and take a shot. Yeah, money can't buy. Look, I'm not going to say money is not highly influential. Okay, if you have a team of lawyers, you're going to be in better shape. But there have been, you know, plenty of people accused of crimes who had teams of lawyers and still got destroyed. Okay, I mean it happens. Um, but uh, Asian countries, yeah, that and that brings me to the the Singapore. I got a lot of comments on the Singapore video and this woman, the sovereign citizen Singapore. Me and Chuck spoke about it a little bit. Um, and uh, you know, you can be put to death in Singapore. You can be put to death in Singapore for drugs. <laughs> and a lot of people who commented on the video had been to Singapore or lived in Singapore. And they're all like, it's not that bad. But if you have drugs, yeah, you're going to go to jail for life. I'm like, holy F. <laughs> like, I, I don't, listen, if you're if you're selling enough drugs or you're a repeat offender, you can go to life here in the United States. I mean, there are plenty. I have clients who essentially have life sentences because they have multiple drug convictions. So, you know, that can go down anywhere. My understanding is Singapore will tag you the first time. You know, my understand they tag you the first time. Yeah, Taze, you put that comment in there. Thanks for coming in, Taze. Um, Singapore is the cleanest city you've ever been to. Um, well, when the laws are that strict, <laughs> you know, when you, you probably go to jail for littering. And they put that, I mean, I think it's hilarious. And don't get, again, we've seen... Here's what will happen in American courts. And you even see some of the videos I did where the sovereign citizens come in and the judges find them in contempt and they order mental health evaluations and we all cheer. Well, the mental health evaluation doesn't necessarily mean that the judge is going to sentence them to get mental health treatment. And I bet a lot of these sovereigns, like they... I, I just, you know, that woman in Singapore, they sent her to a mental health institution for two weeks right away like that. Um, you know, it, it's I you don't see that as much as you would think in the United States. Honestly, a lot of the times the way it works here, the reason you see it a lot, but how it works is a little bit different. What will happen is my clients will hire me. And before the end of the case, before they plead guilty and we do the sentencing, I'll talk to the district attorney and the judge and we'll negotiate something. I say, look, how about my client goes to drug and alcohol treatment, goes and gets mental health treatment, and then they come back and we see if they've made some progress. And then if they've made progress, that can help me mitigate the eventual punishment. Because generally, the judges are not going to actually sentence them to a mental health institution, though that can happen. It's just fairly rare here in the U.S. Singapore is like Saudi Arabia. Great legal system if you're royalty. I bet. In Singapore, you get caned for littering. Uh, unbelievable. Yeah, it was the Philippines, Duterte. Uh, Duterte was sending the police out to just shoot drug dealers. I don't know if they're still doing it, but he was doing it for a while. Most soft sits wouldn't meet the legal definition of insanity. They have the capacity to know right from wrong. You're right, Liz. Exactly. That's why you don't see it. I don't believe you would see it that often. I don't have a list of all the sovereign cases and how they've been dealt with. Um, but they probably wouldn't. But I think that, you know, mental health treatment is probably appropriate if you ask me. Um, Rudy G Gade's fingerprints were all over the murder scene. They didn't. Yeah. Rudy G'day. That was the, the Amanda Knox. My ass. I've been to tattoo parlors in Singapore and it was not. <laughs> hey, I don't know guys. I've never been there. I have, I have no idea. They just believe in crazy ideas without being crazy. Right. But doesn't that make you crazy? If you believe in crazy ideas, does that make you crazy? I mean, you become crazy. If a doctor says it does, you would. Chappelle Corby, Australia, caught smuggling cannabis in Bali nine years straight away. Yeah, see, the thing is, the, the sad thing is I have some clients, you know, marijuana, you don't get slammed as hard. I have some clients who got hit for marijuana in the 90s doing 20-year bids. But again, they're almost all, um, they're almost all repeat offenders. 
you allow flat earthers and conspiracy nutters to run free, free then set up YouTube channels. <laughs> right, man. You're right, Dar Darth Weezus. Caught drunk driving in El Salvador, you're dead by execution by firing squad. For real, angry squirrel? Is that for real? That's crazy if that's real. In India, the cops do not use handcuffs. They hold hands instead. I don't know what that means. I've lived in Asia. It's amazing. They take rules and social contracts seriously. A absolutely, David. Uh, I lived in Japan, and I've I've heard, I've only heard about Japanese jails, and it is not somewhere that you want to be. I'm pretty sure Sharon's bipolar doesn't meet the legal standard. That wouldn't meet the legal standard of insanity, but it's definitely a mental health diagnosis. And the court might help you help her out if she got a diagnosis and got treatment. But again, they usually make it voluntary. And if the person doesn't want to voluntarily agree to it, a lot of judges will be like, well, okay, you're going to jail. Just go to jail for a while. Can a Moroccan lawyer represent a sovereign? I mean, I want, I can that please happen? <laughs> <laughs> Can that please happen? Can we please just get a video of it? My wife just bought a cherry blossom tree for $215 on the internet. Is she Japanese, mass one? <laughs> Japanese love their cherry blossoms. In the ES, suicide, attempted suicide is illegal. El Salvador, the penalty is dead. For real? That's crazy. 10 pounds, that's true, a joke, you know. So she thinks grows. She thinks money grows on trees. Instead, I mean, when you were arrested in India, they do not handcuff you. Instead, they hold your hand. Oh, okay, I get it, I get it. I imagine in Bulgaria, second offense is the last. More sovereigns don't recognize Morocco. They claim it's another corp. I, what we need is a, is a sovereign citizen in a Moroccan court. We probably won't see that because if they pull that again, they pull that nonsense in Morocco, um, you know, might be off with their hands. Who knows? You don't get slammed hard for wacky backy, then change your deal. You can buy. <laughs> well, that's a good one. That's a good one. Please ask. I've asked many times. Does an affidavit unrebutted stand as fact, true or false? Um, that is absolutely false. That is absolutely false. An affidavit, here's what I'll an affidavit is almost meaningless, is almost meaningless in court, ultimately, if there's a good lawyer on the other side. Um, affidavits are means of convenience for sometimes, for telling the court, this is my opinion, is a means of convenience for telling the court what somebody said without bringing that person into court in the hopes that that written affidavit or statement will help settle the case before trial. But an affidavit is per se inadmissible at trial. It is per se inadmissible at trial. So, uh, you know, if I went out and I shot Jane and Bill saw me shoot Jane and then Bill wrote an affidavit down and said, Joe shot Jane, and then he submitted it to the court. Okay, come trial time, I would object to that as inadmissible hearsay and the cop would say, and the judge would say, go on. Okay, go on. An affidavit is only it's it's a, it's a, they're very useful in many situations as a form of community showing the court something. Look, this person signed. They said this. Da, da, da. Ultimately, that person has to come in and give their testimony under oath. An affidavit is not admissible. The only way an affidavit would be admissible is if both lawyers consented to it. If both parties consent to it, then the judge will consider it as evidence. But if neither party does, you have to drag that person in there. That's hearsay. It's an out-of-court statement it, uh, used for the truth of the matter asserted. So uh, there is no validity to the fact that an unrebutted affidavit is accepted as fact or truth. That's not true. Now, there are instances where certain statements or writings can be accepted as fact by a court. Um and that is generally done through the rules, through what are called discovery requests. Um, you know, I could really go down a tunnel with this. Um, but uh, just an affidavit in and of itself will not. 
I do not consent anything that might give me after Dave after after David the ruler of notary republic. <laughs> uh, I thought that was going to be a math question, Tom. I don't know. They're I love it when Britsovs claim they're constitutional. Texas, hello, sir. A witness statement in the UK is allowed with no attendance. Well, Chuck, yeah, it wouldn't be allowed in the United States um, unless both parties agreed to it. That's all. Now, there are certain documents that can be submitted, but they have to be authenticated under special rules. Okay, so we're getting deeper. Like uh, you're talking about just an, uh, an uh, uh, like an affidavit by and large. Okay. For example, there are certain exceptions to the hearsay rule. You may have business records, okay, um, that can be admitted without the person that wrote it as long as there's a custodian. So, you know, if a person comes in and they work for an engineering firm and like, let's say plans for uh, an, an aircraft were being admitted into evidence at a trial over a breach of contract, okay, you don't need the person who wrote the plans necessarily. I mean, you might for other reasons, but you can bring them in and say, this is a business document. This is always done in the course of business. I'm the custodian of records at this company. And, you know, I say that this is an authentic document that could come in um, outside of the hearsay rule. But an unrebutted, like a presented affidavit unrebutted is on its face hearsay. A judge may let it, a judge would let it in if neither party objects to it. They'll consider it. Okay. But that's why you need a lawyer. That's why you don't want to be a sovereign citizen and walk into a trial because you are not going to know how to articulate the correct objection. Like if I'm litigating against a pro se litigant tip, if you're pro se, you're by yourself, don't go up against a lawyer. I mean, I, I'll, you know, I can, I can smash them because I can keep out all their evidence and they don't know how to respond. And the judge just sometimes has to do what he has to do. And they don't know how to keep out any of my evidence. An appraisal may be, right. But you may also want the actual author of the document for certain reasons. And again, it's up to opposing, it's up to the other party to fight for the rights of their party. Um, so I would, you know, I, I object, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I object to almost all documentary evidence because I'm going to force the other party to articulate to me why it should be admissible. So you tell me, I'm not going to just let you bring it in. I mean, that's how I am as a litigator. Like, um, I'm trying to win. A common law, a merchant ship, a merchant's logbook was not admissible, but federal statutes has provided for their admissibility. Yeah, that would be like a business record. That would be a business record or like a security guard who has a sign in sheet to see who came in. That's a business record that could be admitted without the author under certain circumstances. Hello, Eldis. Welcome. Glad you're here from Wyoming. Uh, we got a little bit of snow, nothing that actually sat on the ground, just some flakes, some flurries. Hey, Rajon, thank you for joining me. Charlie Kelly is the bird lawyer. <laughs> I have seen, listen, I watched that clip of Always Sunny when Charlie tries to go up against that lawyer and the lawyer challenges him to a duel. <laughs> <laughs> or no, Charlie challenges this lawyer to a duel and the lawyer accepts the challenge. <laughs> and the lawyer's like, I got a gun. He's like, I got a gun right here. You want to see it? Charlie's like, oh, oh, no, 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 no. Like, you guys got to watch that. Um, if you have not seen, like, just go to that clip. Who who brought that up again? <laughs> Warren. Yeah, Warren. Um, <laughs> if, even if you don't like Always Sunny, just go on YouTube and watch the clip. Always Sunny, uh, Charlie Bird Lawyer. It's freaking hilarious. <laughs> uh, that show was so... I don't watch it anymore. I watch like the first five seasons. The first two or three seasons are freaking unbelievable and hilarious 
Greedo first, Han shot last. True, true. I got a legal question. If one of those Morzersovs gets glass in their eyes, do they have a tort? I, you know, Tom, you asked me that. I'm not 100% sure, but generally the police are going to have immunity if from civil lawsuit if they were acting within the bounds of the law. Um, and that, you know, breaking the window to affect an arrest like that um, is pretty standard procedure. So I'm shooting from the hip here. I would have to research it. Um, but, you know, that's likely not a form of excessive force. It's likely within standard procedure or the police. So I'm going to go ahead and say that even if they got injured in that circumstance, they probably would not have a case. But I don't know that for sure. And it, it could truly depend on the state or the jurisdiction that they're in. But my money is on them not having a case. Hey, Veronica, how you doing? Thank you for the doll. Have you ever thought about reacting to TV lawyers? You know, I I have, Veronica, and I may do something like that um, in the future. Here's the thing. YouTube is a strange animal. And um, there's already a bunch of YouTube lawyers who do that stuff. Like if you guys watch like the Legal Eagle Okay, and uh, Viva Frey. Like, there's already a bunch of YouTube lawyers who do that stuff. You, YouTube, like, I love my audience. You guys are great. I love doing this. YouTube also rewards me. They demonetize my content. So I don't really get, I get some ad revenue, but it's probably like 25% of what it should be because advertisers don't want to advertise on these channels. I, I'm not saying I don't know. I don't know how YouTube does it all, okay? But they say my content is not advertiser friendly, number one. Um, and, you know, the smashing of windows and a lot of police transaction stuff like that, it's not, it's considered non advertiser friendly. So, um, I, and YouTube has sent me this way. Like when I first started this channel, if you go back and look at the Joe Pometto Law Show, Sorry, it's out. Sorry, it's out of, of, of sync, Chuck. It's not on my end. I don't know what's happening. Um, but uh, but um, so Janae Rebecca Smith. I'll look that up in a second, Shadonna. Um, so I thought about it, but I just don't get the same amount of like I have another channel, Joe the Lawyer. I, I don't catch on in that algorithm. Okay. Um, and I'm try I tried to build an audience for it. I'm gonna get back to it. But YouTube loves this channel. They like me making this. They advertise me to new viewers. Okay. They support my content um, on this channel. When I did stuff where I commented, like I commented on politics early on, and I commented on the news, and I, I commented on some of the debates, and they just didn't, they just didn't you know, like this is my niche. Like I found a niche here, uh, sovereign citizens, first amendment auditors, other weird stuff. I have a nice audience. So that's why I haven't done things like pulling TV lawyers and things like that. The other problem too, is if I take clips from the big cable channels, uh, they will, they, they could copyright strike me. So, uh, you can sort of get away with it if you do it right. Um, but it's just not worth it to me. I, I hope that answers your question. Um, I'm always happy to talk about that stuff if someone comes to me, but this channel is probably going to be um, what it is for the, the foreseeable future. Um, all right, Janae Rebecca Smith. John, let's check this out. Is she in Pennsylvania? What state is she in? Is she's got to be in Philadelphia. The, the only reason I can look up Sharon Tracy is because uh, she's in Pennsylvania. I don't know if I can look her up. Janae Rebecca Smith. All right, hang on. Smith, Janae, active, 
da, da, da. Oh, wait, let me look again. Oh, Janae Rebecca Smith. Yeah, she's Pennsylvania. Chester County adjudicated. Push people into paying for PayPal. Bum, 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 bum. Janae Rebecca Smith. Um, her sentencing is scheduled for June 18th. She was Chester County, Chester County. Let's see when she had her trial. Lots of motions. Oh, geez. Um, it's like she had a trial in January. Let me see here real quick. Sorry. The pre-sentence investigation ordered, exhibit filed, waiver of counsel, colloquy filed. Um, jury verdict slip. She had a, uh, she had a trial in January. It looks like she proceeded without a lawyer and she was convicted. Um, this docket is not reflecting exactly what she was found guilty of. And that's because every County does their dockets a little bit different, but her sentencing will be June 18th. Joe Donho. I hope I, I shed some light on your question there. Um, I'm surprised the police have not figured out a post office or a hospital as a private forum and then kick out the auditors. Yeah, some of them have, some of them have figured it out and they do once in a while. Anyone else excited to see the world series played in December? <laughs> Maybe they could play it indoors. Maybe they could play it indoors. Da, 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 da. YouTube, dual YouTube. Fourth of July party. I may come by, Chief. I may come by. I'll let you know. Yeah, Joe Donho. So she hasn't been sentenced yet, but she was found guilty. What do you think about the officer who got suspended for doing a YouTube video? Do you mean, um, uh, you know, I saw the headlines. Um, I think he expressed a political opinion in regards to the lockdown. Um, God, I really don't know what to say about that. Uh, maybe the chief or, or a former officer could give us an opinion on that. Um, you know, personally, if I was a police chief, uh, I don't know. I think if my officers were good officers and enforcing the law and, you know, I, I, I guess maybe the issue was he expressed a negative opinion towards a law that he's expected to enforce. Um, but personally, I would allow my officers to do that. You know, I think it's healthy to have a discussion. And I think, you know, the truth about being a police officer is that um, you may often, you know, your job is, listen, you know, I was in the military for four years. And when I was in the military, like, the, 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 I'm sure you have other guys who were in the military as well know this. They say, if your Sergeant gives you an order, okay. And you have something to say about it or complain about it. If your Sergeant tells you to jump in a lake, you better go jump in the lake. Okay. And then you come back and while you're soaking wet, maybe then you can complain, but don't complain before you jumped in that lake. All right. So if an officer is out there and he does his job and he's doing so, so, you know, police officers like their job is to enforce the laws. OK, uh, they may end up enforcing laws that they don't necessarily agree with. Right. But that's their job. So from my perspective, as long as an officer is out there um, doing his job and enforcing the laws, I wouldn't necessarily mind, and this is without me putting a lot of thought into it, with him uh, expressing a, a an opinion, 
I, I don't know exactly what was said. Hey, Bullet, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'm going to get another coffee with that, sir. Um, I don't know exactly what was said. Um, you know, I, I got the argument is he maybe what he's saying is undermining the mission. Um, you know, this whole coronavirus shutdown thing is such a touchy political subject. Um, and the police are expected to enforce those rules, whether they agree with them or not. Um, it, you know, my opinion, if an officer, again, like it, it would probably depend how he did it. Um, you know, legally speaking, it's likely within the realm of the police department to, to discipline their officers for something like that. So I don't think he's going to be able to turn around, have a lawsuit or anything like that. Um, that's, that's a tough subject that honestly, I'd have to think about it. I mean, my mind's not made up. Um, you know, I tend to lean towards being a, a, a free speech kind of guy. Um, I'm not saying I won't kick somebody out of my chat who's rude or swearing or, or starting crap. Um, but if someone's just expressing an opinion, I'll let them stay and, and I'll discuss it. Um, so that might be my take, but I know, you know, as far as the military is concerned, that can be pretty sensitive as well. Um, you know, you can't really have soldiers out there going on YouTube, undermining the mission that the military is trying to complete. It can damage, uh, morale and confidence in the mission. So I think it's a really, really complicated issue. For me personally, it would depend on what he said. Um, one, you know, one mistake, I might talk to the officer before I suspended him. Um, instead of just going ahead and, and suspending automatically. Uh, so I, I, I hope that I hope that answer gave you something. Okay. Okay, Nada Brad, thank you for joining me, everybody. I go for about an hour. Uh, thank you very much. I'm about to head out too. It's 106. Um, pretty tired. I got up very early this morning. I want to thank everybody for coming in. I want to thank Chuck. Those of you who have not checked out Chuck's channel, check it out. Chuck chases the facts. Um, go ahead, hit the like on this before you leave. I already got a lot of likes, so I appreciate all of that. Um, if any, everybody else, um, check out Chuck's channel. We, a lot of our content, um, overlaps, but Chuck has a lot of, um, different perspectives, great videos, uh, very, very, uh, funny guy. Um, and you know, check him, check out his channel. There it is. Like I said, I'm going to post the, I'm going to record our interview, um, and put it up on my channel. Uh, I use StreamYard for the first time. Maybe Chuck will have to come on and I'll, I'll StreamYard him on my channel. Um, I don't know quite how to do that yet. Um, but everybody tells me it's not that hard. I don't know. Um, okay, everybody. Yeah. Good morning, Chuck. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. He's on the other side of the world, everyone. Well, we got people from all over. I'm in Pittsburgh, PA in the, in the Northeast, I guess, uh, the United States. All right. It tastes better when we sip together. Thank you for joining the Common Sense Academy. Oh, real quick update. I completed the book all the words on my book. Now I'm going through and editing. There's still, this is my first time. There's still going to be additional steps after the editing process, but we are getting much closer. So I'm very excited about that. Also, I have a lot of ideas for what I want to do on my channel with my videos. I'm going to experiment with some different things, add some new stuff to the channels. But I told myself, I can't, I'm not fancying up my videos until I complete the book. Okay. So the book is coming first. Expect my content to stay. It's still great. It's going to stay the same after the book. It'll be better because then I can focus more energy on editing my videos and doing cool stuff with them that, um, I'm just trying to spend that extra time. I mean, I'm a full-time practicing lawyer as well. Excuse me. I'm trying to spend that extra time. Um, 
finishing up on the book. Um, all right, everybody. Thank you very much. Three copies. Thanks, Rajon. You don't have to buy three. Buy one. Um, but if you want to give it as a gift to somebody. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Common Sense Academy is out. See you next week. Enjoy my videos this week. Thank you.